are basically financing and um, financing that forward contract and typically for forward contract um notes they will typically have a fixed tenor they would have a fixed rate of return on investment um and then you can also make money so and you typically for such such instrument are suitable for um investors that are risk averse and would want to just um, ensure that their capital is not eroded in any way shape or form they just want that comfort that um, they are comfortable with a fixed rate of return. Return is usually typically lower than when you trade your spot, spot market, but it gives them that comfort that, yes, they know what they are getting at the end of, of the transaction. And, um, of course, we also have things like the ETC or the FETC, which is basically instead of you having to trade individual spot contracts and instead of you having to trade maize contracts, SOGOM contracts, you're basically trading a bucket of commodity that has been constituted together. And the impact of that is it will give you a weighted return on investment. So it will basically take the return that you would, the return and the risk, because again, return and risk, they go together. The return and risk you would typically have on your maize, on your sorghum, on your soybean, or whatever makes up that basket of FETC, puts it together and give you the average. That is what you get um, on your FETC. And again, you have your input not. So basically, the impute notes also follows the characteristics of your fixed income in which there's a fixed rate of return. And so to make money, depending on your risk appetite, right, you could decide to go very bullish by going all out for your sports contract, or you could decide to be very conservative by doing bulk of your investment on the fixed income, or you could have a mixed portfolio in which you do partly sports, partly fixed income. Again, all of this depends on your risk appetite. But all of these products are available um, for investors to trade, and then you can basically take your position. My recommendation typically would be that if you're trading, if you have a portfolio that is above 5 million, um, you do a 50% in spots. You do it again. These are my own opinion, and also it is depending. You need to assess your, your level of risk, right? To, to know how to divide your portfolio. But you could typically do like a 50% on sports, you could do a 30% on, um, on, um, on the fixed income, and then you can do a 20% on the FETC. And then that would typically give you a medium to high um, return on investment. Thank you. Wow, I, I couldn't have done a better explanation myself. And if, if you had this question in mind on how to make money in commodity trading, Punto has covered all aspects of how to do that on COMEX, from sports to the impute notes to the FETC. So the decision is now left to you on how you'd like to make money in commodity trading. Now, a few days ago, um, we listed um, a new commodity on our platform, and that's cashew. And we had a lot of questions about that. People were asking, is it the right time to buy cashew? Should I wait? What's going on? Can I know more about cashew? And we also had that of the impute notes. People also had questions there as well. So um, I'm calling on Adana. Please, can you give us a brief um, description or information on our cashew listing and impute notes as well? Um, okay. For those of you that have not cashed in on cashew and the input notes, um, I honestly don't know what you're waiting for, but don't worry. I'm sure that after this webinar, you're very convinced why you should get into the, um, why you should go and invest right away. <coughs> I think that I'm just going to jump off from what Funto has said. I think that, you know, I, at comics, what we really want to do is to cater to investors of different um, risk appetites, whether you're conservative, whether you're high risk, whether you're medium risk, low risk. Um, on comics, there will be a product that is structured for you. And really, um, the cashew product and the impute note um, appeals to different um, investors of um, whatever risk appetite that you are. So the cashew spot, the cashew not spot contract on comics is just like if you're already an OG investor in, on comics, you would um, you're familiar with cocoa, paddy rice spots, 
Coco Sports, Sorghum Sports. So basically, that is how cashew is. And um, one unit of cashew is for 2,500. Um, so basically, you come into the market, and we always advise that you jump in as soon as the product is launched so that you can start to benefit on the price appreciation that happens with um, the spot contract. So you jump into the market, fund your wallet, um, and buy as much you need of um, cashew contract as you want. And your trade gets matched, and then you can sell whenever that you want to. So what this what this post contract allows you to do, do is to enter the market and exit the market whenever you want, as you wish, right? But you're also benefiting from price appreciation that would have happened right from when you joined in up until when you leave. And um, then we have the impute, the effect impute notes, um, which is a fixed income product. So um, if you heard when Funta was speaking, she made mention of um, the different risk appetite. And so um, we also found, found out that some of the investors on comics want to put in their money and, you know, um, just go to bed and at the end of maturity, they come and take their money with uh, more money on top of it. So um, that is why we also created the um, effect in notes. Um, so what this allows you to do, right, is one unit of an impute note costs 100,000. You come in um, and then it's locked for a period of one HC days. And then at the end, by the end of, by the end of maturity, or rather at maturity, <laughs> at maturity, you are able to get your money plus an interest of 6% on top of the um, impute notes. Also, with this fixed income, in, um, with the impute notes, you, you have a space of two weeks to jump into the market and then it's locked up until maturity. Um, so basically, that's how the effects impute notes works and also the cashew um, spot contract. So if you've not entered into the market, we're really looking at you with corner eyes now. <laughs> we're really looking at you with corner eyes now. Well, um, some questions are actually already coming in. But anyway, yes, um, Adana, thank you for that. So basically, if you have not um, started trading cashew or if you've not um, invested in the impute notes, in Adana's words, I don't know what you are waiting for. So that's basically that on our new listing cashew and um, impute notes. So um, another question here is, what's the minimum amount you can trade with on, on COMEX? And I will just answer this briefly. And it really depends on the, on the price of the commodities that are currently listed on COMEX. So um, if you want to buy any commodity, you just fund um, at least, um, get at least one unit. So that would be the minimum you can then um, fund in your account to buy that particular commodity. So there's no fixed price. It just depends on the price of the commodity you want to purchase at that particular time. Another question here is, can you cancel a trade on COMEX? And we also get this question a number of times, and I guess it's coming from um, a place where people try to um, place an order and maybe after some days it's not matched but like they don't know if they can cancel the trade and um, set another um, um, buy order. So Idaya, please can you enlighten us on that? Can one cancel a trade on, on COMEX and can you also be probably describe um, the process if you can? All right, thank you Chisum. Uh, can you guys hear me now? Is it better? Yes, yes, I can hear you. All right. So, yeah, definitely you can cancel your trades on Comex. And it's actually very easy to do. So, once you log in into your account, you um, 
on the home page you will see the market tab just below on the screen so click on the market you market tab that's when you're actually using the mobile app so the process is quite different when you're using the web version which i'll also explain so when you're using the mobile app when you log it into your app you basically click on market tab on the home screen then you would see a drop down list of different options of portfolio or market or even for open orders so where so you actually have to click on the open order so when you click on the open order it gives you another view where you see your buy orders your sell and your sell orders so basically to so, and also my orders so under my buy order you basically see all the orders you've put out in the put out to buy on the platform and when you scroll to your sell order you see all the orders you you've put out to sell on the platform including orders so under my order I don't know if you're following. So we can hear you, Idaya. Hello, can you guys hear? Me? Okay, okay, yes. okay. All right. So I just wanted to be sure that you guys can hear me. So when you click on under my orders, that is where you actually see your your personal orders that you have put out to buy or to sell so you just go through the list and click on the actual order you want to you want to cancel either is a buy order or a sell order so you click on the order you want to cancel you see the option of cancel then you click on it that immediately you click on it that order would get cancelled and your fund will be reverted back into your wallet i hope that is clear Yes, that's clear, Adana. Sorry, that's clear, Idaya. Um, thank you very much for that and for that answer. So, um, if you were confused on how to cancel a trade on on um, Comex, Idaya has answered. Uh, if you need more clarity, you can still um, let us know in a Telegram group or something. Then we we'll see how we can go from there. So before I go into the next question, um, I just want to use the opportunity to say that um, if you're trying to fund on COMEX, because we've been having um, comments where people fund and um, they, they get um, their funds delayed, please also try using the Oh, paper. sorry, sorry. I forgot to mention at all. Chisum, sorry, I forgot to mention Yes, Idaya, please continue. Okay, um, while we wait on Idaya, I was just saying that um, you can also try using the paste stack function on the Comex platform if you want instant reflection of your um, funding in your accounts. And just try that for, for, for okay that. thank you Chisum. so what I, want, I said um okay okay i think she's dropped yes Daya, please um go on her network is um bad so she has dropped out i'm sure to join back in okay 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 um while we wait for Idaya, I guess um, I'll just go um, into the, some of the other questions that were sent um, to us. I, I just wanted to like piggyback on the answer that you were giving before on the funding. Um, okay. So we always advise, so we have two um, funding methods, right? So you can either do the pay stack or you do the bank transfer. Uh, you, if you fund with the pay stack, it's more instant. Once you fund with the bank transfer, please don't forget to click on the notify me button. That way we, we are notified that you've made a bank transfer and then we um, your wallet is automatically funded. But if you don't indicate with the 
notify me but saying that you have made a transfer then it's difficult for us to know that you made a transfer and so we want you to have a very great experience so please if you make a transfer with to fund your wallet don't forget to click on the notify me button and the description of the transfer this with your name or or your client id just to let us know that who you are and then able to fund your wallet appropriately so i'm um, cheese i'm sorry you can go ahead i just wanted to um just clear oh, okay thank you very much for that addition very that's very important to note as well that will help your um funding to even reflect faster if you decide to use the bank transfer method so um let me go straight into the next question we are almost um sorry we're already 42 minutes in so um this question is um to you um Hinto. so someone asked does anyone does one need a broker when selling commodities does one need a broker when selling commodities on the Comex platform? Okay, so um, if you understand the workings of a, of of uh, of, a, of an exchange, whether it's a commodity exchange or whether it's a uh, as an equity exchange, every exchange requires that a trade the trade goes through a broker, right? So it doesn't matter whether you're trading equity or trading commodity. So yes, you need a broker to trade on COMEX or on, on, on commodity on AFEX. Now, COMEX in itself has a broker behind it, which is why um, when you download, you are automatically tied to a broker that you then pass your trade through. Um, for other, um, apart from, from the broker behind COMEX, we have other uh, known broker in the markets, right? We have the likes of Vertiva, we have the likes of Lead Capital, we have um, Marble Capital, and we have quite a number of brokers already. So if you go through the community session, you will see the list of the brokers that are there, and then you can decide which broker you want your trade to go through. Okay. Um Thank you very much, Funjo, for that answer. So um, let me just quickly pick one or two questions that we have in the chat um, section. And I realized that immediately Adana spoke about cashew. Quite a number of people have some questions on, on that. And please, you can still um, drop your questions. We'll pick the little that we can in this, in this short period of time. So um, Ade, Ade Damola said, um, is this the best time to invest in cashew nuts? No. Um, um, so please, can you answer that question? Yes. So the answer is yes. Um, cashew on like grains, like uh, cashew on like maize has more than one season in the year. And uh, around late February, March is usually a new season for cashew. Cashew has a short, um, and because it has more than one season in a year, um, you would have the one earlier in the year and then you have another season later in the year. So um, our listing of cashew at this time tallies with um, the harvest season, which will typically happen around this time of the year. So um, if you're going into cashew now, yes, it, it's a good time for you to go into cashew now. Can you guys hear me? I think she's on his phone. Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So she's on um, so Yeah. I let me let's see if we can just go through the Q and A very fast. Okay, so yeah. Asking, I bought a unit of FETC. How do I monitor the price action and know when to sell in order to make profits? Um I think that, let me just take a stab at this. So um the FETC is a fixed income, it's a fixed product, right? And so once you buy, you can sell up until maturity. And whenever you open your your the, um, your portfolio, you see the increment on the on the prices depending on when you 
So you'll be seeing um, the increment, um, the price appreciation on top of the on top of the prices. And so at the end of the month, once it gets to maturity, then you're able to sell. And then you can, um, once you sell, your money plus the interest that has, or rather the price appreciation that have accrued um, would um, be credited to your wallet. And then you can either reinvest into another product or... Um, or withdraw into your bank account. Um, so we have a question here from I want to take that. If I buy if I buy products during harvest season, will AFEX assist me with storage until I'm ready to sell? So we, we have two boards, right? We have the sports board and we have the OTC board. Um, the spot board is where you deal with your physicals, and usually it is not for um, entirely for retail investors, except for those that want to, to buy and take delivery of physicals. So if you're looking at um, trading in physicals, then you would need to upgrade your um, your membership on, on COMEX, and then um, the necessary assets to the OTC board will be given to you. But, but to answer the question, yes, you can buy the physical and store in our accredited warehouses, and then you basically be charged the storage and handling fee up until when you take delivery of the physical. Okay. I'm um, sorry about um, the break in transmission, um, network issues. Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, um, yeah. I think there's another question here. I'd like to know when AFEX will have ethical Sharia compliance products listed. The sport products mirror the concept as what risk and rewards are shared. Okay, so do you want me to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so we're currently going through um, certification, Sharia certification for our products on Sharia compliance. And in, in, in a few weeks, we would have, um, for all the products that are currently listed on our comments, we would have the equivalent of the Sharia compliant version once we're done with the certification. Okay. Um, there's a question. Do you have any commodities that yield is in Forex? Um, Yes. So we yes. do. So let me. Can, can you take the question again, please? Do you have any commodities that the yield is in forex? I don't know if the person is. Yes, we do. Um, yeah. but they are. So again, when I was mentioning um the how you could make money on on comics, I did mention that we have a spot contracts and we have a fixed income like products. So and one of them that I mentioned is the forward forward contract note. A forward contract. Could actually be a forward contract for local aggregation or forward contract for export products. And for um, for the forward contract on the export product, which is basically financing um, exports of commodities like cocoa, commodities like ginger, commodities like sesame and cashew, um, the return or the coupon on them are paid in dollars, right? So um, investments is in Naira, principal that are paid back in Naira, but the interest on them, which is coupon based, are paid in dollars. And um, those would typically, those products would typically come out around the season where exports uh, products uh, are available in the market, which would typically be around July, August. That is when we typically have uh, um, a dollar yielding um, instruments listed on the platform. Thank you. Um, there's one other question. Let me see. I'm running through to see the question. A lot of questions here. Um, hmm. How can you monitor your commodity commodity to know when to sell and exit market? Um, <laughs> so this this will be dependent on the com on the product that you are. Um, invested in right so if you are if you invest in fixed income products like the if you note for example then you know that you have a set like a specific
specific interest that would accrue and so you don't need to come in and be monitoring it by the end of maturity you know that this is what you're getting if you're going into the spot contract then that's where you like come in and just check so we have um fx weekly prices that go out every week to all our um investors you also like to join our telegram group we also drop that there a uh, weekly as well on the comex platform you would see prices increase um so you can come in and monitor on the app we, we also have um the weekly reports that are sent out that you can find on our website effectsnigeria.com so depending on the products that you're trying to you're in your you want to invest in um the entry and exit and when to sell might just might differ a bit um i don't know if there's any other addition so fantastic response just to add to what adana said um again when you're going into comments right i have one thing at the back of your mind in terms of products the products are in two broad categories it is either it's a fixed income product or it is a traded product when you're looking at the traded product, that is where you have your spot contract, your your um, your spot contract, right? And under your spot contract, we have different commodities. So knowing when to buy or when to buy and sell the commodity, you need to understand the planting and the harvest cycle of the particular commodity you're going into. Just as I mentioned at the beginning, that for most of the grains or for most of the crops that are produced locally, it is in one season for most of them. So which implies that planting would be around the raining season and harvest would be around um, towards the end of the year when the rains are, are over. So for the likes of maize, sorghum, soybeans, um, it is advisable you come in at the beginning of the season. At the beginning of the season, meaning harvest, when harvest happens, which is typically between October, anywhere starting from late October up until end of February, is a good time to come in because prices are low at November. Prices would climb as you move away from November, but they won't climb up. Um, in, in various astronomical ways. Then somewhere between February and um, April, May, prices would go up and that it will fluctuate basically. And then between May and, and June, July, prices will reach their all time high because that's the end of the season. So bearing that in mind, you then want to say, okay, I want to come in at this price. For some people, they will say, you know what, I'll come in at this price. Once I get a 10% um, price appreciation, I am exiting. And some would say, you know what, I'm coming in at the beginning of the season. I want to go all, all, um, I want to go all lengths to the end of the season and I'm exiting at the end of the season. But understanding the crop calendar of the particular commodity you want to invest in is very critical to you knowing when to go into the market and when to exit. For commodities like paddy rice, commodities like cashew, commodities like cocoa, that have more than one season. You can't do the come in November and stay for 270 days or nine months. You need to watch what is happening, particularly for the export ones. You need to watch what's happening within the international market because um, activities around the international market would definitely impact the prices of local markets, right? Um, and then also you need to understand the final destinations of some of these commodities, right? For cashew, for instance, um, for work of the cashew that we, we, we produce in Nigeria, the final destination is, is India and the Vietnam, right? So if they are buying, it implies that there will be an increase in price. If they are not buying, that means the price of cash will crash. So a, a number of things goes into what's very critical is understanding the season, the, the planting and the harvest cycle of the commodity you want to invest in. It would help you know when to come in and when to exit that market. Thank you. Thank you, Fonto. Thank you very much for that. Um, um, Ada, I, I don't know, has the question on um, the difference between um, OTC and sports been answered? I was off for, for a bit. Mm. Mm, I don't think so. No. Okay, someone asked here that what's the difference between OTC and, and, and sports? So the difference between the OTC and the sports it's just in, this, in, in the way the transaction has settled, right? For the spot contract, settlement is in cash, meaning that um, if you're buying or you're selling, if you're, if you're buying, for instance, you're not buying because you want to 
take the underlying assets that uh, underlines the contract. You're buying because you just want, you're buying the contract, you're waiting for the price to appreciate, and then you're selling, and then that settlement will happen in, in cash or in, 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 in currency. But for the OTC market, the OTC market is usually a B2B platform. Yet the, the, the key players in that market are the core traders of this physical commodity and the ultimate consumers of these commodities. So the players you would see that on the buying end of that, I mean, the OTC market would typically be your agro processors like your Nestle, your Ola, your uh, feed millers, your rice millers, and the rest of them. Those are the ones you would see um, playing large on the OTC market. And the OTC market is actually a big ticket market. It's a big volume market. So typically, you would see people going into the OTC market. They are transacting in um, millions and even up to billions in terms of the value of commodities that are being traded. So basic difference is number one, OTC is, is settled in the physical. You actually take physical delivery of the commodity that you're trading. Whereas on the spot markets, you're trading for capital appreciation and settlement is in cash. Well, um, thank you once again, Pinto, for that very um, comprehensive answer. We're literally three minutes away from 4 p.m. And this is a one-hour webinar. I don't know, should we take one more question or should we call it a wrap? Okay, I let's just have take tons of questions, though. <laughs> yes, we do. We have a lot of questions. We have some questions. Okay, so what is asking this question? And um, he's basically asking for clarity. The person is asking, um, why is the price listed on COMEX different from the real price in the physical commodity market? Um, Futo, please, can you answer that? Okay. I'm not exactly sure what... Um, yeah. yeah. So the difference is for the physical market, you're not accounting for for storage again for every contract that is traded on the spot market there's an underlying commodity in a warehouse so it's it's not it's not a gambling system it's not a, a pyramid scheme it's not an mlm um, kind of system for every couple of contract listed on the exchange there is an equivalent asset that is backing it and then there's the process of converting that physical asset into a contract called the securitization. In the process of securitizing it, you're putting into consideration collateral management, you're putting into consideration um, um, storage, fumigation, and, and the rest of them. So all of those costs put together makes that difference between what is happening in the physical market and what is happening on comics. At the end of the day, there is kind of, you could, you could, you could draw a correlation in what is happening in the physical market and what will potentially happen on COMEX. So if prices are rising on the physical market, right, um, chances are that the price on the COMEX will also rise. And if prices are dropping in the physical market, chances that prices would also drop in, in the, in the, on, on COMEX. Um, I don't know if that answers the questions. I think that answers, um, I think that answers the question. That was a question from Adi. Mm. And I hope that answers your yeah. question. So, um, Desmond, um, Punto, you're saying something? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's this question from okay, there's a qu asking if we have a flat index. Um, what was the performance for the year 2020? I don't have the exact. So, the answer is yes, we do have our own index. We have our um, com uh, ACI and we have our AEI. AEI is for the export, is the index for the export. Is why the ACI is the index for the for the exchange. And I, I don't have the exact number, but I we can get that across to you. Okay, and there's this one here. He's asking, is there any product I can invest in that has a determined ROI? Um, this one that would be our input notes, which we currently have listed on the platform at the moment. You can invest with as little as. 100,000 and in 180 days, you get a 6% um, interest on your investment alongside your capital. So that's one um, instrument you can invest in on the COMEX platform with a determined ROI. The spot commodities, however, don't have a fixed ROI, of course, because it's um, there for trading, but the input notes has 
that so you can invest in our, our impute notes. Shit. Sorry, okay. I, I think there was um it also had to what she's um said, right? Apart from the impute note. Yes, uh, I, I, I still encourage people to buy into the FETC, right? The, yes, the FETC is not a fixed in is it, is not it doesn't give you that final uh, return on investment, but I would say that it will still give you a decent return on investment, even at whatever price it is now, because it is an actively managed basket of commodity with a fund manager that is looking at the trends in the market and adjusting the portfolio as appropriate to ensure that the investors get the optimum return on investment. So it takes off that board, it takes the body off you to decide whether you want to buy maize or if it is a good time to buy maize or is a good time to buy sorghum or soybean. It is basically buying into the FETC and have a fund manager actively uh, manage that. I think um, from, from listing to date, the FETC had done 41.8% return on investment. I, and I am optimistic that it could still go as high as 5%. So there's an, a 9% upside that um, anyone coming in at this point could still potentially make. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for that addition, um, Funto. So, um, Ade Damola is asking, um, please, what is the commodity calendar for cashew nuts? Funto, please, can you help with that um, answer? I didn't, I didn't get that. the commodity calendar? Um, so someone is asking, please, what is the commodity calendar for cashew nuts? I guess the same way you explain um, on the calendar for other um, commodities that are listed on COMEX, person wants to know what the calendar is like for cashew nuts. Okay, so the calendar for cashew nuts, just as I mentioned, we have two um, calendar seasons for cashew nuts. One at the early part of the year, which is between March and um, with, um, late February, March, and that window period will typically be for about 90 days. So you have this season starting around this time, up until 90 days would be March, April, May, to about late May, early June, and then you have another season coming up um, around September, which will last for another um, three months. Thank you for that. Adid Amola, I hope your question has been answered. Um, this is already um, way after 4 p.m. I don't know. Um, we might not be able to answer all your questions, but trust that this is not our last webinar. We would um, we'll still plan um, other webinars in the future where we get to answer your questions and also keep you updated on the commodity market. However, if you've not joined our Telegram group, you should do that right now. Like Adana said, we post um, things that can be helpful to you as a trader in the commodity market. And if you're yet to sign up to Comex, I don't know what you're waiting for after this webinar. You should do that. Join our Telegram group, sign up, and start trading. So, um. I think that's pretty much it. Um, Punta, do you have any final words for 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 us? So I, I would say that the, the commodities market is a very interesting space. Um, for one, um, it currently delivers a higher return on investment than any um, investment opportunity that you have in the market. Um, for two, it is also an impact investment. And for every Naira that you invest on, on COMEX, it eventually finds its way back um, to a farmer in Saminaka or in faraway Nasarawa, and it helps them to continue to pro procure, or, or help them to continue to have the ability to procure quality imputes, which would also definitely increase their productivity and ensure that they have a better standard of living. And then, of course, commodity is not a get-rich or get, get it's, it's not a it's not a money doubling entity or it's not a get rich quick vehicle um as with every investment some it, it takes time 
it takes um, consistency and it takes mastering um, the, the trading skill for you to get the best out of it. It's, um, it's an interesting space pretty much. Thank you. Yes, um, that's, that's pretty much it. So thank you everyone for joining this webinar. Thank you so much. And just um, keep watching this space. Like I said, join our Telegram groups, so, um, sign up to Comex and just stay informed. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Bye.